The Mad Dog's House of Pain, the only nationally licensed pro wrestling school in the state of Alabama. Mad Dog Dan Sawyer, trained by the Junkyard Dog, will be your trainer. You want to be a professional wrestling superstar? Learn from GCW's own Mad Dog's House of Pain. With over 22 years experience, learn from the Mad Dog's House of Pain. 205-567-6482. Start your career today. Call 205-567-6482. The music plays, the microphones go hot, and we are live on this Tuesday night, October, August the 16th. Wow. And my time worked for what? <laughs> in a multiple location station from Global Championship Wrestling, welcome into GCW Radio. Live in Studio One, yours truly, Fast Study Lane, tag team partner extraordinaire, ladies and gentlemen, Mad Dog Dan Sawyer, one half of the GCW and World Tag Team Champions. Daniel, how you doing, my friend? It's fun. Doing well. I thought you were pulling a Doc Brown and just taking us to the future there, sir. <laughs> I was going to say, great Scott! He's got a better car and better drugs than I can ever find. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> hey, you're the one that went to you know, the, uh, October. So, oh, yeah, you weren't accusing me of anything. Okay. No, 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 no. I said, hey, Doc is... Got to keep it clean. Got to keep it for the kids. Right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> how, how are those hams? I just want to know because, you know, it's never too early to have ham. You know, some people just wait till Christmas or Thanksgiving, but... Ham is one of those things you can have at any time, right? Is that what Road Dog said? It is certainly is, and for my personal world, it's always smoked salmon is a great thing too. Yeah, salmon is not bad. Not oh bad. no, I just wish that Chile could get all their stuff straightened out with all the antibiotics and everything else they're feeding the fish down there. Because one of my favorite places here in Birmingham sells sides of salmon that is Chilean farm raised, and unfortunately, we've had to deal with a situation with that particular vendor where. The controversy is what kind of antibiotics are they feeding their fish? It's like, really? You got to take that one away? Crap. But, you know. Next thing you know, promoters are going to start paying in checks. Yeah, no. No. I don't care if it's on their account or their mother's account. I ain't taking that check. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I came from, you know, I wrestled in uh, Orlando Sunday night or Sunday day into Sunday night and then, uh, did a show yesterday at noon in Tampa, Florida, and drove back, got home around midnight. So, it's only around two or three days, and going to do it all again at Arcadium this weekend on Spring Hill Friday and on Knoxville at the Olympus on Saturday. So, if you're listening to us in the Tennessee markets, make sure you check out Arcadian Wrestling Association this Friday and Saturday night. Now you got a couple guys coming down on Bat Basics, uh, King of Florida, Bunny Clyde of Professional wrestling, Francisco Chiazzo, and maybe Stormy Lee. Uh, if she's not arguing with people on Facebook during that time. There you go. But, uh, you know, hey, see how they little plug back to basics coming up at 9 p.m. this evening at Central Standard Time. Right. So, hey, in there. And actually, I have to apologize because every once in a while, you know, the new media department has a brain fart. So as I adjusted the time for the Back to Basics poster for the Eastern time zone, I forgot to adjust it for the Pacific time zone. So for everybody listening right now, out on the West Coast, Back to Basics will kick off at 7 p.m. Pacific time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, it, like I said, sometimes new media get, needs to get a little bit more sleep. <laughs> Yep, but, that's okay. Speaking of new media, trying to please, when you're trying to please the masses, it's hard to do. It's understand to that do. concept. Understand. Uh, by the way, real quick, I want to say a very special. Speaking of new media, the the new media department would like to say a very special thank you once again to everybody who made it out to the live event in Pell City um, back in July and took advantage and utilized the Snapchat filter made exclusively for Red, White, and Bruised. Um, considering the amount of time that we really had to get that publicized. Um, a great feedback on that. So for everybody who has Snapchat and use that um, filter from Red, White, and Bruised, uh, all of us at Global Championship Wrestling want to say thank you very much. And we will have a new Snapchat filter available at, um, it'll be fenced in for the Pell City Civic Center on... Summer Sizzler. Yes, for Summer Sizzler 2016 on the 27th of August, which is right around the corner. 
But do me a favor, before we did that, um, before we start hitting on the 27th of August, let me go back to July for a hot second. Six-man tag team match, the co-main event for the evening. Um, the Brotherhood, O'Malley, O'Hagan, and J.P. McGregor taking on, of course, um, the tag team champions, yourself and Leon Stresser, and your partner, A.J. Steele. Great to have Mr. Steele back in uh, Global Championship Wrestling. It was, and uh, the fans were glad to see him. And uh, can't wait till we see him drop in again. And, you know, it was one point in time he said he couldn't beat Spiral, he was going to retire. And, you know, we all go through those times, whether you're injured or just, you know, whatever. I mean, AJ's been doing it 16, 17 years. He knows, um, you know, your body just takes a lick. And, and, and here's the thing. He works for more than just GCW. He works right. at Peach State. He works at different places all over the place. And just like the old man over here is doing, you know, um, putting, putting a lot of miles on the car back and forth to Mississippi and Tennessee and now Florida, Florida. It's, uh, it's, it's, been a, it's been a hot, lucrative summer for Mad Dog as well. But, hey, you know, everybody's ready. They want to find out what's going on this Saturday night. I mean, uh, next Saturday night, excuse me. This Saturday night's Arcadian in Tennessee. <laughs> next weekend's the GCW. And, uh, you know, like him, and uh, GCW fans don't like him too much, but uh, something's been said that he was going to take on... Uh, a guy that kind of just debuted last month, uh, AJ Good Times Gray. Really? It's got you know. It's kind of it's kind of funny that uh, we got two AJs and we got two Steels. We got Michael Steel, Kryptonite Killer, and now we got uh, AJ the Good Times. Well, Gray. actually, do me a favor. And, uh, I hate to do this, but I um I ended. I guess I inadvertently announced him as JJ Gray back at uh. uh you know, I I don't know. He is on Facebook as AJ. Right. AJ, I think, is his work name, so I don't know. So, uh, Mr. Gray. <laughs> Mr. Gray. We'll go with Mr. Gray. No, not Christian Gay, Gray from, uh, uh, you know, Fifty Shades. Right. Yes. Hello, Elizabeth. Uh, <laughs> yeah? Oh, yeah. I'll take your microphone. Uh, Yes, Elizabeth turned two on uh, Sunday. Ah, congratulations. And, uh, yeah, and now she's came in here to uh, Daddy's room and decided she's going to cut a promo while we're on the air. <laughs> uh, you know, never too early to start, young ones. Never. Ones, cutting promos and wrestling. And then she's wanting to talk about Frozen and Keys, car keys. But, uh, you know, you got to get your point across as long as you identify yourself first and who you're going to be. <laughs> Remember, promote the show, and then promote promo the... 101. Yes, on, it is. Uh, radio. <laughs> you know, that's hey. fallen into some of the topics that we've run here on Beyond Ringside Sports Radio all the way across the board. And that is, uh, you know, that would be the art of the promo. And that is yeah. something that a lot of people in the new era, hello, WWE, I'm not taking it from you, I'm taking it from reality, um, have seemed to have been falling a little bit short on. You know, it's it's. I'm going to shoot straight for a hot second because it is common knowledge that for those who have been coming to Global Championship Wrestling live events um, for an extended period of time, they, uh, they've they come to know the fact that regardless of what your personal philosophy is at the time, and I'm not saying this because we're friends, I'm not saying this because we're co-workers, I'm saying it because it's the truth, because I identify you as probably one of the best talkers around. Because you know you know how to cut loose, you know how to have fun, but you also know how to nail it down into brass tacks. And there's times where, you know, once again, and I'm not going to use the t traditional terms. That's why I said regardless of what your per um, personal philosophy is at the time. For those playing the home game, Eddie does mean heel or face. There, I said it. Um, but you've always, you've always found a way to mark where your promos are going to be. You have that lead-in point, and then you have what I call the nail-down point. And here's the fun part, because everybody wants to talk about the the promos that are cut on WWE TV sometimes, and they have to remember. People have to remember those are scripted. When, when is the last time that you and I looked at a script to cut a promo? Hey, we don't. It's not that easy, yeah. But uh, you know, you come out to independent wrestling. You don't know what to expect because um, 
I had one of the workers tell me recently they had like 16 people come from work they've never been to wrestling live before watch it on TV uh, they used to go as kids they hadn't been in 20 or 30 years they came to the show last month and they said wow and they like hey I want to meet you know a couple of guys whatever and they took time to shake my hand and introduce themselves and say hey I just got to say that was fantastic and I said well let me just ask you a question did you expect it was going to be terrible and they're like, we didn't know what to expect. I was like, well, as long as you have a good time, come on back. And he goes, well, we're never going to mess again. I said, okay, we're cool. Sounds good. And I was like, well, if you thought tonight was good, wait till you see this lady. I said, you know, uh, the Doc Gallows, Bully Club, Good Brother Club, Doc and Anders, uh, Anderson, excuse me. <clears throat> he said, yeah. And I was like, well, his wife, and I showed a picture of Amber O'Neill, current reigning defending National Wrestling uh, Alliance is uh, ladies' champion. And uh, I said, that's Amber O'Neill, and she's going to be taking on uh, Veronica Fairchild. And he goes, oh, is that the chick that came in and hit the girl on the head with the belt? I said, yep, that's her. He goes, man, she seemed dirty. I was like, I don't know personal hygiene habit. He goes, no, man, you know what I mean, dirty. I was like, oh, man, I haven't heard that term in a long time. I know Peanut says yellow and coward and a cheat and whatever, but he was he referred to Veronica as being dirty in the sense of her wrestling ability. That way nobody says that I said that she's dirty, you know, in the sense of hygienic. But, um, yeah, I mean, Amber O'Neill versus Veronica Fairchild, now, here's the thing. I don't have a info sheet if it's a uh, title versus title, or if it's GCW title, or if it's the NWA Ladies Champion, but I will promise you to have you the information next week. And it's not that I'm unprepared from Bullet's desk. I have to wait to see what the NWA National Wrestling Alliance agrees to. Right. Hi, so Bruce. That is, that is what's going on with that, so... You know, stipulations have to be signed off and all that kind of stuff. There are real contracts, and this is legit. We don't just <clears throat> make up stuff as we go improv it. You know, it's a very big deal having the NWA Ladies Champion on the show. And uh, I know that there's a lot going on in wrestling. Uh, you know, there's some mud being swung here, there, and everywhere. But I'm going to tell you right now, this is a good time to be in this business. Amen. It really is. It really is. Things are on the upswing, and it's not because of Trevor Mann getting signed uh, or looked at and different things and just hot things on YouTube. No, people are caring about the business. They're caring about the business. They want to do better. They want to get stronger. They want to get faster. Um, the first thing... Recently, somebody asked me on a little interview thing, what's the best advice that you can give to somebody coming straight out of training? I was like, well, hopefully the training was good, <clears throat> and you need to get out and work, but do not expect to be the world champion, tag team champion, middleweight champion, uh, intergender champion. That's not what this is about. And if you think it's all about belts, glamour, and the dollar, mm. you're totally incorrect. Passion has to be first. I'm not against someone making money. This is what I do for a living. But to think you're going to be rich straight out of training or halfway trained, <clears throat> it's not happening, guys. I mean, uh, there are diamonds in the rough. Oh, yeah. There are people who, who who have been at the right place at the right time. But there's a lot more guys that are out there loving this, working hard, doing the best they can to make the best match for the fans. Because we work for them. That doesn't mean they have to be happy at the end of every show. Because that was one thing 
that we have laughed about many times in the past when a pay-per-view didn't go a certain way and people said, well, I'm just going to get rid of it. <laughs> I'm going to get rid of the network. I cannot believe this. But that made me sit back and I laughed to you, and I, you may remember me saying this. Up until last month, before that network came out, they were paying $60 and $70 to see this pay-per-view. Yep. Nine ninety nine a month is not too bad. You know, and you know that was before getting all the other shows. I'm not taking anything away from the fans or the fans' money, but understand, we are all fans of wrestling. Someone tells you, you know, I hate that M word with a passion, because William Regal laid it out to us. I know Hagen and me did the extra talent. Shouldn't refer to people as Mark. He thinks it's an ugly term. He comes from the carny world. And he said, you shouldn't refer to the fans as that. You refer to them as the fans. Because without them, you don't have anything. But understand, there's not always pleasing every fan. We work for them, <clears throat> but we work for the promoter. So it's got to gotta take care of each other. Therefore, we can continue to eat, you know, the next day. You know, I mean, the better you work, the more we all do better. And that's that's the way it is in wrestling. And if one guy is not pulling his weight or he thinks he's a superstar and he doesn't want to help do setup, he doesn't want to do promos, he doesn't want to make pictures, you need to rethink that you're not an exception to the rule. If you don't promote, <laughs> including the poster, we will find someone else who will. And that's not just GCW, that's talking Arcadian, uh, All Pro. Beach State, uh, AWE. Yeah, Beach State, you know, all the guys, you know, the respectful promotions, I respect you. You've got to listen to me when I tell you this. If you're not promoting yourself and you're not promoting the event, you don't need to be on the event. Simple. Because you think either, one, you're above it, two, you're lazy, or maybe you just don't have social media. But, uh, you know, unless you want to go out and hang out posters, there's only the way to do that. I miss those days. <laughs> I still do them. It's just me, though. I was talking with the Arcadian guys, and they're what? Well, <clears throat> how do you promote? And I told them. <clears throat> and they're like, well, who does that? And they're looking at them. Why? Because I know it's done right. You know, when you do your system set up on... Uh, whether it be the karaoke show or the GCW deal, you don't have an engineer to do it for you. Nope. You do it yourself. And that way you know it's right. Same thing, I ran into some folks in Mississippi, a guy said, God damn it, my wife forgot to pack my socks. <laughs> and Bill Dundee, Superstar Bill Dundee and Rodney Mack and me, didn't say nothing. And, uh, walked into the locker room and we were just discussing business and this and that and Rodney and me were sitting there cutting up and and Dundee goes do you hear that bloke I said uh, excuse me he goes do you hear that bloke say his wife forgot to pack his socks I was like yes sir I did he goes what an idiot <laughs> yeah. okay yeah pack your own bag idiot you know he was just really hot <laughs> the guy would say that so you know, uh, I look at him and I said, but Jazz, back your back for you. Maybe if I couldn't walk, you know, I mean, uh, you know, that's the thing about it. I mean, you're responsible for your own stuff. It's your job. You're an independent contract to go do your deal and uh, do your best. Um, let's jump on to that uh, fantastic grudge match that keeps going on. You know, uh, the feud is still firing and and they had to pull those guys apart. They were trying to kill each other last time. <laughs> Don't seem they can keep it in the ring. So falls count anywhere. Um, it, what, what, uh, you know, I, you know who I feel sorry for in this match? I'm, I'm just going to be honest. The referee. You don't think I'm trying to be funny. I feel sorry for the, the TV guys. Yeah, yeah. They will get <laughs> steamrolled because I remember Red, White, and Bruised, the return of Francisco Chiazzo 
after the 60-day suspension. He served it begrudgingly. He kept saying that he really didn't feel he did anything to deserve a suspension. And lo and behold, and of course, Clyde Braddock came back the month before the grand design back in action. They faced each other at Red, White, and Bruised. And I told everybody from the get-go, this was not going to be a wrestling match. This was going to be a fight. But by the same token, when you've got somebody with the amateur background, highly decorated state champion, and I'm referring to Clyde Braddock in that regard, you've got somebody who can take those amateur throws. And, yeah, another one that I feel sorry for. I kind of worry about security going into the Summer Sizzler. But when you Yeah, I mean, we got an extra four guys for that night, but, you know, the, for the TV show, TJ and Frankie and those guys, they're going to have to follow it wherever it goes. If it goes into a hall, if it goes out into the street, if it goes up to the uh, <laughs> the walking track, I mean, there's no telling where this match could go. And, I mean, it could end up in the weight room. I mean, there's a full weight room, full fitness facility in there. I mean, just stay out of the way. I'm just going to ask you and just wait and watch it on TV. I know everybody wants to see it as it happens. Oh, and, believe me. I mean, like I said, if you're if you're sitting front row ringside in this one and you see two 250-pound bodies flying your way, move. Mm-hmm. It, you, the chair can be replaced. You can't. And speaking of uh, perspectives, Remy right now, um, GCW family, inside the chat room right now, located at beyondringside.com. So for everybody listening live right now, chat room is open. Drop on over. Love to find out what's on your brain. Uh, if you'd like to recount some of your experience um, from Red, White, and Bruised, love to hear, love to see what you got to say. But Remy brings up the false count, uh, and I quote, the false count anywhere match scares me because there is a huge huge lake not far from the bell city civic center uh remy said that he's going to go ahead and tell um, uh donnie to go ahead and bring his water wings oh my goodness i forgot all about love and martin maybe we do need some mind jackets and stuff <laughs> i mean uh well only remy you know that's why uh you know him and mr price do a great job so oh, yeah uh, yeah thanks for the uh, stress they want the liability policy. <laughs> you know, nowhere in the Athletic Commission of the state of Alabama does it say anything about battling in water. That's true. This could be dangerous. That is very true. There is, there is a chance that, you know, somebody might not swim. Or knowing Kiazzo and Braddock, these two wouldn't have a problem trying to drown each other. I don't know. But considering, I mean... You have to remember, and I'm going to keep this in perspective, because the G- the officials at GCW, whether it be Timmy Feldman, whether it be Bernie Kawanowitz, or any of the other referees that we have on staff coming in on a rotating basis, you know, in the heavyweight championship main event from Red, White, and Bruised, a lot of latitude was allowed. In the Chiazzo Braddock match, a lot of latitude was allowed, because if you remember and I'm sure you were in the back watching the monitor while you were recovering from the six-man tag, when Eric Wayne and Spiral got out of the ring and continued to fight and made their way up to Sound Central at the stage, I mm-hmm. when I saw those two coming my way, it's like, I don't know what the hell they're thinking, so I'm just going to try to start moving my stuff back and keep it safe. And then Spiral pulled... Um, the maneuver that he did off of the stage onto Eric Wayne. First off, I thought my table was gone. Second, but he missed it completely. And then as I'm watching him execute the maneuver, he almost caught the basketball net with his feet. Wow. Yeah, it was that close. No, they went off monitor. I mean, we were on a security monitor on the side too, but... We did not have a view of what was going on. The people were going crazy. Security was like, thanks for all need a raise. <laughs> because everybody's trying to get close to the action, which is great. I know you want to see it. But do not, repeat, do not get hurt. Stay in the ring. You know, I know that this Falls County Anywhere match is going to be just cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Um there, there are a lot of superstars that are going to be there. That, you know, we're going to have a full card next week on Tuesday night, eight o'clock Central Time. I'm opposed. I'm streaming, which I know you're never supposed to do, especially in wrestling. 
but um, you know we got the, the show to talk about it pre you know show next week. Oh yeah, on Tuesday night. So one of that full laid out card, but uh, Chiazzo and Braddock. Some elements that we haven't even discussed in this. We talk about it. Twelve count anywhere. Uh, well, Francisco and Stormy Lee. They're calling themselves the Bonnie and Clyde of professional wrestling today. Yep. And uh, you know, I think of the Warren Beatty version uh, when I think of that. But um, you know, those were two gangsters that uh, robbed places. Now, Bonnie and Clyde. When they make that reference, they're not saying they're going to kill him, or at least they haven't yet. But, uh, you know, they're, they're taking on Clyde Braddock. Well, Braddock's got a man watching his back, and uh, he is no no stranger to professional wrestling, nor is he a stranger to the GCW ring. And uh, that is the wicked nemesis. And he will be in the quarter of the Grand Design, Clyde Braddock. And... Um, with it being like it is, a falls count anywhere match, um, I don't know. I mean, Storm Lee doesn't really want to get involved because um, I know that Wicked is, uh, he's not, he is not scared to use the pimp hands. I mean, uh, he, he would put somebody in their place if it came down to um, trying to take care of business of someone trying to cause Braddock to lose or Braddock to be in bad position so this is this is this is my uh, public service announcement for the evening uh, Stormy please do not interject yourself in this match please Wicket is a gentleman but he's all business, and you don't want to poke the bear with a stick. No matter how long the stick, I'm telling you, this is one guy that you do not want to irritate. And I mean, not to mention that Braddock is a beast. He is strong, he is powerful, and uh, he is one of the best on the mat grapplers in professional wrestling today. I'll, I'll put that out there as the full spectrum of wrestling all the way across the board. Uh, he knows how to take care of himself. He was a two-time Georgia State wrestling heavyweight champion. And um, he's a man that is very, very serious about his career. He wants to further it. But, you know, recently... He's a dad. He's found out he's going to be a dad, and he's married, and life is good. But when those things come into your life, when you become a husband, and then you find that you're going to become a dad, um, those things are bearing on your head. Oh yeah, that that's heavy. That's heavy. You know, because you're providing for your family now. It's not just okay. I'm just providing for myself. But, you know, this is not a nickel-dime operation. This is not running anyone else down. But guys don't just come to hang out, to work, just to be seen. It's a job, okay? It is a legitimate booking and a job. And they take it serious. And nobody's getting all drunk or anything before the show because we're professionals. The Marquis says, and I said this the other day with all this debacle going over in Jungle in Georgia, the Marquis says, professional wrestling. That means these guys are getting paid, but you are going to see professional attitudes, professional costumes, <laughs> and professional attitudes, they, you know, from start to finish. And... Um, I've been some places in the last three years that you do not see that. You don't see air conditioner always. Mm. You don't see respect. You don't see a clean ring. Uh, you don't. Some. I was at a place, and it didn't even have a dressing room. Uh. Where, where do we dress? In your car? No. <laughs> 
And it was a huge packed out deal. No, I mean, you do. I mean, um, Bell City Civic Center, showers. Not a luxury. It used to be everywhere you went. Armory's always on showers. You know, these, the, these things add up at the end of the day. AC is huge with this heat blast that we've had. Oh, God, yes. Humidity, and, uh, especially. I just thought it was. Not just talking about in the ring. We're talking about heat in general outside the climate and humidity. But thank God GCW is going to be there August 27th with an air conditioner. It's a summer sizzler tour that the air conditioner works. It's funny some places in Georgia and Mississippi will have on the sign with air conditioner. Yeah. What? You know, uh, but see... You know, you just assume and think, oh, they got AC. Oh, they got running water. Oh, they got a toilet in the side. <laughs> yes, they do. And they play both types of music, country and western. Thank you, Blues Brothers. Right. <laughs> What's some freak paper heads playing? There ain't no Hank Williams song. Well, see, I've also got to come back on this one for a hot second because you and I have worked in venues before Palmerdale. And, or should I do it the old-fashioned way? Um, <laughs> Mabo, love you, brother. Um, but from that vantage point, yeah, there were times when the Palmerdale Homestead Community Center didn't have the greatest AC or heat in the world. Yeah. And God love Jasper, we, Alabama. That's all I'm going to say. We made them enough money that they were able to do that from the haunted house and from GCW. And, uh, you know, it's just, it was great. It was great to help out like that. But, you know, where was that when we, where were you when we needed you the most? Yeah, really? And then of course I've all, I've had a great conversation with a longtime friend the other day who, um, asked me a very unique question when the Oak mountain state fair came through last time. Um, they said the last couple of times they've been to the Oak Mountain State Fair, they keep looking for global championship wrestling. So I'm going to go ahead and say, you know, we would love to be able to return to whether it be the spring fair or the fall fair. Um, yeah, the front office of the Oak Mountain Amphitheater. And of course, I think it's Red Mountain Entertainment, whatever it's called. Um, you know, they make those calls and we've had a great working relationship with them over the years. And on our side of the board, and this is legit, we don't know it. We really honestly don't know what happened. Um, nah, we, no, nothing did happen. It's just uh, they had some changing of the guard, and there you have it. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, make sure you call them tomorrow, 205-985-4900. Once again, 205-985-4900, Live Nation. Tell them you're ready for GCW Wrestling back at the Pelham, Alabama State Fair. So, uh yeah, let's let's make it happen. The voice of the people can be heard. And Remy brought up something in the chat room when he was uh, when we were making a reference to Palmerdale. Um, he also said, "God bless those kerosene heaters," and those were the days. <laughs> oh yeah, we had black boogers for weeks. I know that's disgusting to <laughs> my but it, you, after you breathe kerosene for a long period of time, especially if you're taking some suplexes and getting your back broken <laughs> on body slams, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna have some kerosene darkness. Oh, no definitely. Wonder everyone, no one ever, everyone's sinus has improved, you know, since uh, letting that go. But, you know, we've talked about it Saturday night, August 27th, with returning to Pell City. You know, you got time to make your plans. School's back in. Things are bought. Everybody get paid on that Friday. But Saturday night, August 27th, Pell City Civic Center. AC's going to be working. We make jokes about it. Woohoo! Other places, AC is going to be cold and chilling. And uh, come on out and see the great matches of World Championship Wrestling. I know a lot of people keep up on us with social media and uh, different things on Messenger and text messages and stuff. But keep passing the word. It's going down on Saturday night, August 27th. It's going to be set. Uh, the matches we've announced so far, the big grudge match. Uh, Francisco Chiazza with Stormy Lee uh, taking on the Grand Design Clyde Braddock with the Wicked Nemesis at the Falls Count Anywhere match. Talked about the ladies match. Now, stipulation will be next week, as we said, NWA Ladies Champion Amber O'Neill Gallows, the Bullet Babe, that's right, 
part of the Bullet Club. She was a part of that original deal. Uh, she's going to be taking on Veronica Fairchild, the GCW Ladies Champion. And like I said, next week, we will discuss next Tuesday night what stipulation will be at 8 o'clock Central Time for GCW Radio. I'm going to audio bomb you on something because I just remember I've been meaning to tell you this. And I've been meaning to post this. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the heads up. I have not gotten everybody in the front office on board yet, but I'm going to go ahead and let you know. I have the video shot from the front. Hold on. Shot courtesy of the shh, don't tell anybody cam from the mixed tag team match in Rockford, Alabama, when you teamed up with Amber O'Neill Gallows to take on O'Hagan and Veronica Fairchild. So that match actually might be making it. It's single cam view, folks. It's not multi cam. It is not professionally done. It's not, you know, it's not quick edits all over the place. But there is a strong chance that that match could actually see the light of day very soon. Or some highlights thereof. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. And also, uh, by the way, Remy brought up a good one in the chat room. So let me segue for a second. Folks, for those of you planning to come to the Summer Sizzler 2016, At the Pell City Civic Center, August 27th. Remember, you can, while they last, while they are available, reserve ringside seating by simply sending an email to gcwmedia, that is gcwmedia, at yahoo.com. Our front office handles that email address. And as you, um, like I said, when they receive it, um, I don't personally monitor that email account. Um, I know that you've had dealings with the front office on that one. Uh, there are responses that are sent out, right? Yes, there are. But you need to make sure that you send it in or, you know, call the number. I mean, but the thing is, even if you reserve a seat, you've got 15 minutes after the door is open to get there. Right. And, uh, you know, you can't. If the show starts at 7.30, you've got the 10-minute window to 7.40. Please get your seat. Now, I know there's always a line and all that, but we get the door. We get the door in before seven thirty. The door is clear, and you need to make your way there. And I know everyone's busy on the weekends, but you can't get upset because there are other people. If you don't want to make the effort to get there a little early, there are other people that want those seats. And when you don't show up, it irritates the regular fans. So. We appreciate everybody what you call them reserve seats or not, but thank you. But that is how that works. And a lot of people, uh, by the term that's very popular, they want to be butthurt about this. <laughs> like that. Uh, you know, it, it's first come, first serve it is. on the reserve. You know, I mean, that's, that's just the way it is. There is no money that exchange hands for a higher rate of the chair or anything else like that, you're going to get to see the action close. You're going to get an opportunity to get autographs. There's T-shirts, there's pictures, there's posters, you name it. Um, you know, some shows that I go to, that they're like, we're doing intermission. Well, when do we go out and sell? Get me well, we don't. Now, how do you get out and, you know, meet the people and you know, get them to come back. I don't know. You know Have a good match? Yeah, but <laughs> it'd be nice to get out there and, you know, press the flesh. That's the good thing about indie wrestling. Now, I don't agree with, uh, you know, a guy wearing a mask and uh, doing his thing and trying to get over it and then eating a hot dog out there in front of the people. That's very unprofessional. I True. Mean, um, you couldn't do that on your day job. Say you're a construction guy, you can't be sitting there eating a hot dog. Um, you know, I don't know, even with your lunch break, you're not going to sit there in the public eye. So think about being a professional the whole time. I'm not saying that I've never had something from a concession stand, but you've never seen me have a concession stand snack item in front of the people. You just don't do it. Right. Repeat, you don't do it. You know, you. you Certain things that you don't do, but um, you know, the show is already planned. You know, people are excited. They've been calling for two or three weeks about you know tickets to this, and you know, 
I'm excited that they're excited because the better wrestling does, it's good for everybody. It's not just what's going on in Tennessee, Georgia, Florida, Mississippi, and the Carolinas. It's we're one thing. And uh, when WWE does dumb stuff, hmm. it trickles downhill to us. And like Lesnar cussing, you know, I'm, that's, I'm not saying I haven't said things, but you're not going to hear things like that. And, um, you know, I was on the way back from Tampa from wrestling yesterday, and uh, some of the folks in the car was talking about that. You know, if their child repeats that, even though it was censored, right. if he ever says anything like that, they're just not going to watch it anymore. And that is the way things are. Somebody's like, well, that's different because you... You, uh, you, you know, people cuss all the time in the movies and all that kind of stuff. Well, it's different. It's, you know, 14 and above. It's a, a Y rating but until 9 o'clock. You know, and I mean, if they want to go, oh, sure, they can. You know, people are like, well, what about Walking Dead? What about that? That's not catering to children. No. That is, that is, that is, everyone knows that it's for mature audiences, just like Sons of Anarchy and many other shows that have gone on over the years. Um, we're on a different level there. I mean, uh, wrestling has always been family entertainment, and, you know, the attitude there in the ECW deal, it, it did change it a little, but um, I'm not going to do anything that I wouldn't want my daughter to see, okay? Right. And uh, that's that's the thing I have to look at, you know, is that going to... Is that going to offend the folks from the church? And I'm, I'm going to be the first one to tell you, you get me dictated outside of the ring, and I, I'll, I'll make the paint peel. So, uh, <laughs> and I'm sorry for that, but that's just one of my things. And we can't repeat that phrase that I said one time. And I said, well, it looks like I'm going to have to become that again. And I'll never forget your face in Cullum, Alabama, at the Patera's restaurant. You're gonna... <laughs> I was on the floor laughing my tail off. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know. I can be I can be kind hearted, I can be mean, but uh the best thing is, you know, the Capone quote that I put out there two years ago is like, Don't misunderstand my kindness for weakness, you know. Don't just because you gotta be good to people. The world is uh in a crazy state of affairs. If you don't believe me, just watch the news for ten seconds. God. Um No kidding. Wrestling is wrestling is our escape and when you see professional wrestling, GCW, you know you're going to get a professional show. It's going to be a family show. It's going to be a good time. That doesn't mean it's not entertaining. Uh, my thing is, Bob Armstrong was complaining about a certain wrestler one night. He was out there going off on the microphone, saying everything there was. And he goes, well, that's cheap heat, and that killed the town. <laughs> and uh, sure enough, the next time we went, there, the house was down 100 people. And um, that was in Freeport, Florida. And uh, still a good house, but he's like, I told you. And you go out there and talk like that, that's not what they want to see. They're there to see guys wrestle each other, the good guys, the bad guys, um, the different characters. I mean, it's it's entertainment, but it's hard work. And uh, you should get paid for that entertainment. And uh, know who you're working for. Goodness gracious. I made the joke to Eddie before we went on the air. How many times did you take a check in your... What year did you break in? Seriously. Like, when did you come in in 84 or 85? First started training in 84. Okay. I broke in in 90, and that was one of the things that was always hammered to me, is don't take a check. I haven't been written a check by Jerry the King Lawler from Memphis. And guess what? That was as good. I just wish I'd have made a copy of it. Yeah. But in the WWE check, I did make copies of that one. But... Life is uh, tough, but know who you're working for, have it negotiated, don't try to hold people up like the ultimate warrior, and expect more money at that moment, uh, because the house is good. They're there to see everybody, they're not just there to see you, and if you think that's the case, you need to get over yourself and learn that it's a whole show. It's not just I and team, but uh, it's all about us, like the whole group, because... Not one person brings the house, you know. You know that, I know that, but there are still people out there that they talk when I came out. 
That's because you're coming out to a song that's on the top 40. You know, real easy to do. That's not a true pop. They didn't know you. They're, they're cheering for your song. But uh, nice try. Get the pop in the ring and show me you know how to work. That's that's what it's about. You know, um, I'm going to give this one out, and I don't know if you saw it from last night's Raw. You know, we've had every promotion has had one or two bonehead moments. I've had a couple. I'll admit it. But last night on WWE programming, and this is something I'm going to cover a little bit more in depth on Back to Basics in just a few. Sheamus, in-ring, mini-interview, cutting promo. The fans start chanting, as they have for weeks, you look stupid. Sheamus snatches the microphone out of the hand of the interviewer, turns to where the people are loudest, and says, and I quote, Let's get one thing. Let's clear up one thing right now. You paid to see me. Guess who's stupid now? Really? I'm pretty sure that Vin Man in the back came unglued. Yeah. That's a comedian line that he took out of context, and I forget who said it, but, you know, that's dumb. It's a live microphone. Um, there's nothing wrong with your wrestling. There's nothing wrong with your look. Learn to talk and know when to shut up. You know, it was, uh, your pay is the same regardless. Yeah. But that didn't make anyone like you or boo you that much more. It just made you look dumb. There's and, a, but if you're not sure how the line goes, save yourself a headache and don't use the line. Right. Well, look, I know we got to wrap because you're about to go back on. We're back to basics. I know Francisco Chiazzo, former GCW heavyweight champion, and now the Bonnie and Clyde of professional wrestling, going to be joining you. Like I said, we'll be back next Tuesday night. Next Tuesday night, yep. we'll be on the air, uh, 8 o'clock Central Time, and we will have the full card for Saturday night, August 27th, the Summer Sizzler Tour. And uh, I thank you for letting me get in here. It's been a long road this weekend, Orlando, Tampa. Now it's time to be uh, glad to be back in Alabama. And then cooking the road this weekend, Springfield, Tennessee, and Knoxville, Tennessee for Arcadian Wrestling. Go check it out on Facebook, Arcadian Wrestling Association. Um, if you're in the Tennessee market, get ready for some great stuff. we got Gang Grell and Kevin Thorne from WWE. Uh, the uh, Wild Eye Southern Boy, Tracy Smothers, Chase Stevens, Cassidy Riley, Rebel, Tracy Taylor, Micah Taylor, the Marine. Check it out, Sean Schultz. This goes on, Damian uh, Wayne, Eric Wayne. It's going to be good, so uh, check that out. Stick around for Back to Basics. Eddie, it's been a pleasure, sir. Thank you very much. Look forward to seeing you uh, soon. And uh, talking to you next Tuesday night. Also, want to throw out this one out real quick. Remember, folks, if you are listening and you have a dream about becoming a professional wrestler and you live in and around the state of Alabama, I got a phone number for you. 205-567-6482. That is the direct line for Mad Dog's House of Pain. You want well, Don't waste my time of yours if you don't want to really do it because, uh, you know, uh, there's... 37 guys that have graduated from there that will uh, make you wish you hadn't joined if your heart's <laughs> not really in it. So, uh, you know, that being said, I'm just telling you, because a young man recently said his girlfriend could chop better than a couple of GCW superstars. And uh, I got these pictures from the training center while I was away in Florida. Yikes. I'll send one to you. Okay. We can't put it back there. We won't put it out there, but never, and I mean never, ever, say your girlfriend chops better than professional wrestling. You will pay the price for that one. The seven questions that were there out of the 12 people that were there, really, and I mean really, knocked the hide off of this individual. But I think he learned his lesson. That's a good Eddie, thing. Eddie, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Being here on GCW Radio with you. 
see you next Saturday night on the, I mean, uh, Tuesday night on the air to get ready for Saturday night, August 27th, Bell City Summer Sizzler Tour. Everyone hang around for Back to Basics. Francisco Chiazzo is coming up. The King of Florida, Bonnie and Clyde of Pro Wrestling. GCW Radio is a Mad Dog Media production in association with Monitor 4 Productions. Until next time, we'll be back right at it on August. See, I got the month right that time. August 23rd, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central. Yeah, we'll get that part right, too. For Mad Dog Dan Sawyer. We'll see you next week, folks. I'm the Magic City Motor Mouth Fast Study Lane saying thank you for joining us. And join us next time as we go ringside and beyond with Global Championship Wrestling.